2. Praise the Lord, War Room. What a joy it is to be in here with you this morning. I greet all of you in that wonderful phrase that we quote in Latin every time we meet, sola deo gloria. It literally means to God be the glory for great and wonderful things he has done. So I'm just being nosy. Has he done some great things for you? Wait, just don't jump in just because somebody else is saying yes. Just be honest with me. Has he opened some doors for you? Has he made some ways for you? Has he answered some prayers for you? Has he dried some tears for you? If God has done anything for you, I want to begin the war room this morning with two words. Thank you. Hold on. As we march toward Resurrection Sunday morning, I want you to just offer these two words as a prayerful praise and earnest petition to God before we get started. Thank you. Um, I want to thank you for being in here with me, especially those of you who are brand new to the war room. I'm talking like your first time. Let me just invite you to what I think is the greatest prayer call in the country. We're going to be 11 years old another couple of weeks. And I say to you, we're the greatest because of people like you. Thank you for visiting us. And hey, War Room, who's really been in here a while with me, type our one word. We type it every single time. It's just one word. You know the drill. You know the deal. Type it. Welcome. I love it. And all of you all here for the first time, see these words, welcome, popping up on that screen. It's because we are peacock proud and honeymoon happy to have you visit with us today. Oh, bless his holy and righteous name. Okay, now, for those of you who are not new to this, but true to this, I want to say thank y'all for your faithful friendship and fellowship. Man, I was at the Lily Grove Church this past Sunday, and I ran into a marvelous couple, man. Just had a little baby boy. They told me, Pastor Adolph, we are in the war room every single Wednesday. Ran into so many people who said, Pastor Adolph, I'm in that war room. Can I tell y'all from my heart to yours, that means so much to me. You know, people tend to do things for money. You know, people do things for money. You go to work for money. You know, you're not trying to be broke. I'm, I'm trying to do my best, right? The war room doesn't have a fee attached. There's no subscription to get. I just want to pray with people. And many times my mind says, you should stop. Just, you know, pray for your own flock at the church and go on about your business. But let me tell you what the Lord gave me. There's some things you can't put a price tag on. And answered prayer and the privilege thereof is one of them. I do this every morning because I love God. I love God's people. And I love being near you all. That's why we do it. Because healing happens. Because miracles take place. Because doors fly open. Ways are made. We watch God, man, just do what he does best. That's why those of you who are in here like Mary Simon, Angela Brown Jacobs, Alicia Rayford, Glenda Mann over in San Antonio, Texas, Barry Nix, Johnny Robertson, so many others who are here, every, John Alexander, y'all just, you make this a joy for me. In fact, if you are in here, man, and you really like, this is what I do on a Wednesday morning, just type these words, I love the war room. Love the war room. I love being here. That's why we do it. Thank God for all of those who just make this happen every single week. And I just, I, my joy is knowing that God hears us, knowing that God makes a way for us, knowing that God is sharing his word with us, knowing that God is empowering and enlightening us, knowing that he's changing us. He is conforming us to the image of his son, whether you know it or not. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. I mean, that's how we roll. Okay, hold on. What sense does it make to have a prayer line without a prayer request? Get me those, will you? 409-543-0798. Oh, what a joy it is. To get your request each week. Give them to me. You don't have to just give me a request. Man, bless me with a praise report. Tell me that the tumor has been shrinking. Tell me that it's still stable. Tell me that your A1C is lower. Tell me that you got your health back. Bless me. You can do it. 409-543-0798.
you are interceded for every single week. Hey, y'all, Monday, Thursday is tomorrow, and I want you to tune in and share with me as we have our first Monday, Thursday moment of Mandata Le Forum, the new commandment, Monday, Thursday. Please join me, 6 o'clock. If you anywhere near Antioch Baptist Church in Beaumont, Texas, get to the campus at 3920 West College Drive. If you're not, just join me because we will be streaming it live. I cannot wait. Wait a minute. Got a new book. I signed one for a lady Sunday, man. It blessed me. She said, Rep. Madoff, I got my book already. I said, hallelujah. I did a Christocentric anthology with my friend from the Catholic Church, Bishop David Toops, last year. That's entitled Back to the Table. This book is on Amazon. You can get it for just $10. We'll mail it to you. But for the next 60 days, I'll be talking and teaching you about the tables of the Lord. Did you not know that the entire ministry of Jesus was spent headed to a table, at a table, leaving the table, or preparing one? Y'all, when you start realizing everybody don't want you at their table, but God has a seat for you at his, it's going to shout you big time. It's going to inspire you. It's going to make you say, who, me? And I'm going to say, yes, you, child of God. Get the book. Uh, we'll spend 60 days starting from April the 1st all the way over into, what is it, April, May, June, June, whatever. We get through, but we'll have 60 days. We'll be in this book. And I want to say to you, thank you so much. We're marching the resurrection Sunday morning. This is the Easter before, this is the Wednesday before Easter today. Tomorrow, Monday, Thursday, the next day, Good Friday. So I want to bring you to a text that I just think you just shouldn't pass by without leaving as we make our plans to conclude the book based on a true story. Thank you all for getting it, man. Really, I'm so, I'm so overwhelmed with that. Luke 23, 34. He's now suspended on the cross. Luke 23, 34 reads like this. And he cried out these words. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I want to tag this text with this title for my time of discussion with you. I won't let hating you kill me. I think that's one for the ages, man. Wait, I want you to put this on social media for me. Will y'all do that? Will you bless me? Put this on your social media with a bad picture of yourself. I won't let hating you kill me. Wait, I want you to put this up for every ex that you have. <laughs> every neck that don't like you, every coworker that thinks they can just pocket your piece in their purse, just put it out there, y'all. I won't let hating you kill me. The grass withers, the flower fades, the word of our God shall last and stand forever. There is something interesting about God and relational constructs that I think I need to mention from the onset of the day's lesson. God gives you your family, but makes you choose your friends. Sometimes you wish that could be vice versa. I wish I could let God pick my friends and let me do my family. And sometimes I wish I could just choose my family, let God pick my friends. In either category, there is a striking resemblance, whether you pick them or God does. People inflict hurt on us. <laughs> if you have never been hurt by the words that somebody spoke on your life, by the abnormal use inflicted upon you and enforced, that means you've been treated abnormally, abused, neglected, lied on, cheated on, looked down upon, the victim of an ism, racism, classism, sexism, 
culturalism, hedonism. If, if you have never been hurt by a person, let me just tell you this. You know not what today's subject matter shall entail. It's even worse when you have to see the victimizer every day. It's even more hurtful when the person who did it is unsorrowful, goes without any form of hurt or punishment, and it almost seems like they're prospering and doing well. Oh, my God, my brothers and sisters. And to add insult to injury, it's even worse when the person who did it died and didn't apologize. Come in. I'm sitting with a lady of our church whose name is Gloria. For the sake of anonymity, I will not tell you Gloria's last name because her cousin may be watching the war room. But Gloria sets an appointment to see me as a pastor of our church, sits in a seat and says to me, Pastor Adolph, I'm a 64-year-old woman and I am bitter. I am angry. I suffer from anger issues, and I know it. She said, I am upset most of the time. I have found peace in the bottom of Remy Martin bottles. Remy and I have become good friends, she said. She said, but the truth is, I'm sick of Remy Martin, and I'm tired of being bitter. She said, God said to come to you because you could help me. <laughs> I told her, I'm not a magician. I'm not a therapist that is licensed, but I know God. And I know God to be a healer. And if you're willing to try, I'm willing to help. Come here, can we talk? Listen, y'all, let's talk. I said, tell me what happened. Ladies and gentlemen, her uncle had repeatedly raped her as a young lady. When she went to tell her mother what her brother had done in her teenage years, she's 64 years old, her mother said, shut up and go to your room. She blamed her for the entire incident. And what ended up happening was a bitterness and a resentment and a hatred, not just for the man, who did it, who was her brother, but for her mother. Her mother passes away suddenly with a massive heart attack, never says I apologize, never says I'm sorry, never recants it. So she grew up with a festering hurt in her soul. Can I just ask, anybody been hurt? You faith, you, you found it, didn't you? You found a way to cover it up. A new necktie, a new suit, new car, Better weave, better makeup job, right? But it festers. She comes to me and she says, pass right off, can you help me? You know what I told her? I can't, but God can. Because you're at a point where hating them is killing you. This morning, ladies and gentlemen, it is my prayer. Woo, I feel the Lord sitting on me. God Almighty. Somebody about to get healed this morning. My prayer is that there were those of you in the war room with me who have been hurt, devastated, lied on, pierced by people who have done you harm. Because I am here to tell you, if hating them is hurting you today, you're going to get healed and it will hurt no longer. If you know people, hold on, can I just call time out, time out, time out? If you know anybody who's been hurt, abused, neglected, uh, terribly done by people, and they struggle with issues of forgiveness, get them in the war room now because after this, it will hurt no longer. If they do what God has prescribed in this text, the pain will go away. The memory may be there, but the pain won't be there anymore. Jesus is suspended on the cross. Jesus has been marched up the Via Della Rosa. Jesus has been through several false trials, legal and illegal. Jesus 
has been lied on, beaten with cat nine tails, and nearly left for dead. Jesus has now been nailed to a tree. The spasms of hurt are going through his body. He looks like a corpse of the prophet, one big bloody bruise. A crown of thorns has been placed on his head that now scrapes his cranium. He is naked, bruised, beaten, and battered. And the men who did it, listen here, are beneath him gambling for his clothes because his clothes are filled with spike nard, he cries, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If he could be freed of the hatred he would have had for men who nailed him, if he could be freed from the emotional tyranny of hurt. If he, as a man, could look at those people who've done him that badly and ask in prayer for his father to forgive them, so can we. Today is a good day because I need to expose some of your hurt to offer with healing. Today is the day for people whose hurt has been hindering them a long time. Today is a good day for those who were sexually abused and raped. And you've given your life to trying to find the right person. And all you do is give too much too soon, too quick, and it reopens the wound and the hurt becomes deeper. Today is a good day for somebody who was beaten and You've never been able to tell a soul. Today is a good day for the emotional wounded who've been through all kinds of dismay, disgust, and despair, trying to love people that won't love you back today. My God is a good day because my assignment, ladies and gentlemen, is to offer you the balm in Gilead. You know what it's called? Forgiveness. Holistic, complete, blessed forgiveness, liberty, emancipation, favor, forgiveness. Today, somebody's going to go free from the hurt of your past, where the hurt that you used to have ain't going to hurt anymore. Good God of my, wait, can I just shout hallelujah? Hallelujah, Lord. Somebody. I don't know who it's for today. God told me to tell you, it will kill your joy no more. What, Pastor, how do we do it? I got to teach you about forgiveness. Three principles, you ready? Number one, I want you to realize, first of all, the principle of forgiveness. As a Christian, ladies and gentlemen, forgiveness has a principle. There's an old cliche that said, what goes around comes around. That ain't true. And here's how we know it's not true. Because some of the things you've done to the people ain't came back to haunt you either. Here is the truth, and I want you to hear it. Forgiveness is not an option. It's a commandment. Forgiveness is not a choice. It's a chance. Forgiveness is not an option. It's an opportunity. <laughs> Forgiveness, ladies and gentlemen, is the key to your own healing. Forgiveness is a selfish act. It has jack to do with the people or person who did it. Forgiveness is your blessing wrapped in disguise. Forgiveness is strength under duress, waiting to show you what you profess by faith. Forgiveness, ladies and gentlemen, is the key that says, I'm free and you'll never hold me hostage again. Forgiveness is not a feeling. It's a decision. God help me. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. The word forgiveness comes from the Greek word aphemy. Some even go to, as far as to say, ah, for maybe, but it's really ah, for me. And it paints three pictures. Can I give them to you? The first picture 
is of a boat being pulled up by the anchor and the person on the boat putting the anchor on the boat and them shoving the boat into the deep of the water. The second picture is of a divorce decree. I sign, you sign. I'm out of here, deuces. You take the silverware, I take the tepperware. You take the toaster, I take the blender. I'm out now under him. Don't call me, I'll text you. Last picture, a prisoner going free. What do all of these pictures teach us? That at some point, there is a release date. On the boat, release happens when you pull up the anchor. In marriage, release happens when you sign a divorce decree. If a prisoner goes free, he's been released from bondage. Mm. Did you know that real forgiveness, ladies and gentlemen, deals with letting a prisoner behind bars go free? Pastor Adolf, I'm not in jail. Ah! Yes, you are. If you're still penalizing other people for the damage done by others, and that's not even them, you are in prison. If it still hurts when you think about what they did, you're in jail and don't even know it. But today, real forgiveness happens when you realize that you're the one having the handcuffs on and you don't have to wear them any longer. Did you know that forgiveness is really an economic resolve? Yeah, it deals with debtedness and someone being in debt. You see, the truth of the matter is when people hurt you, revenge is best served cold on ice. I need somebody who say, whoo, you kill my dog, I'm gonna kill your cat. Just wait, but wait, here's the truth. Don't miss it. Revenge, ladies and gentlemen, makes you your own enemy. There is no peace. There is no resolve. So the best resolution then becomes the release of those who thought they could hold you hostage by hurting you in your past. Woo, I'm about to shout. Why? You know how close you are to freedom? You ready? One decision away. One. God, I feel, wait, I got to pray right now. God, let them make the decision right now. Lord, the woman who is watching, who is beautiful on the outside, but crushed on the inside, let her make her decision right now. God, the young man who is sharing this broadcast and who's been angry with his missing father, hurt by his current wife, God, let him find freedom in just this one decision right now. Um. Forgiveness is so powerful until you can get to where forgiveness is actually real. You do realize forgiveness has layers. Um, um, Dr. Charles Stanley in his book, Total Forgiveness, makes this wonderful assessment. You see, there is unforgiveness. That's what you say. I don't care. I'm going to die. I'm real. I hear what you're saying, but I'm going to die hating them. Just God, dog. That's unforgiveness. Then it's what he calls partial forgiveness. Uh, it's it's pseudo-forgiveness, actually, where you say, I forgive them, just get out my face. I ain't trying to see you, you know. <laughs> just get out my face. You know, I'm good if you don't come around me, because if you come around me, we might have to move some furniture in this bad boy. You understand? But then total forgiveness is not where you forgive them and you don't remember. It's where you forgive them and you can remember without the pain. No pain. Can I tell you what God does? He erases the pain, but lets you keep the memory. I don't know who this is for today, but listen to me. The principle of forgiveness says the decision is yours. Number two, there is the power of forgiveness, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if unforgiveness is dangerous, total forgiveness is your blessing. You hear me? Uh, Jesus is at a place where he's being crucified. Uh, and the crucifixion is horrible, heinous, 
hateful, satanic, luciferian, and demonic. But Jesus knows the secret that if I don't let you go, then the reciprocity of forgiveness will never find me. Here's how it works. If you need to be forgiven, you must first forgive. It's why forgiveness is so powerful. It's trans-redemptive. In order to get it, you have to give it. Okay, hold up, hold up. If you don't have nothing you need to be forgiven for, cool, no problem. Knock yourself out, hold a grudge. But if you have a peppered past, filled with mistakes, mishaps, and mess-ups. Let them go. And when you let them go, God lets you go. It reminds me of when I was driving my first truck. My daddy bought me a 1977 Chevy Love pickup, four in the floor with a rusted out bed in the back. Hold on, don't talk about my hoop. It was mine. You feel me? And uh, the problem was, ladies and gentlemen, is that it was a four in the flow, but reverse and first were next to each other. And my father was trying to get me to learn how to drive it and didn't have no gear marks on the, on the black knob. And every time I thought I was in first, I would actually be putting it in reverse. Have you been there? Just when you thought you forgave them, reverse. Just when you thought it was over, reverse. I've learned that sometimes reverse can be a curse because when you're trying to go forward and they say something, do something, make you think something, it pulls you backwards and not make you go forward. So here's what has to happen. You have to write something on your gear shift that'll help you. My father took some liquid paper. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Y'all don't even use liquid paper. No, my daddy took some liquid paper, shook it up, and painted a cross on my steering column. And he put on the cross, one, two, three, four, and over the left, R. Put a little circle around it. He said, Bobby, if you don't learn how to move out of first, you'll get stuck in reverse and you'll never make any progress. He said, forgiveness is like that. When you realize that you need for God to forgive you and you let others have it, you move from reverse to first. And you can get the first, you can get the second. If you can get the second, hit the clutch, you can get the third. If you can get the third, you can get the fourth. I'm done. That's enough for today. The principle of forgiveness, the power of forgiveness the promotion of forgiveness. I'm done when I tell y'all this. I love the Discovery Channel with everything in me. I love me some Discovery Channel. Man, when I'm just sitting there trying to make sleep, find my address, I will put on either ESPN da, 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 or the Discovery Channel. That soothing music makes me say, whew, I need to take a chill pill. You understand. The other night I was watching it and it was showing this guy in Bhopal, India, who does bloom flights. And uh, this, this is a nerdy looking Indian dude, but he had these beautiful flights he would take and they would be taken in balloons. And you know what he would do? When he needed to get off of the ground, I noticed he would dump sandbags. Yeah, see, balloons have sandbags on the sand is heavy, and he put sandbags in the bottom and sandbags over the side. And when he was ready for takeoff, he lift off, soaring, he would dump the sandbags. Mm -hmm. You see, the sandbags were so heavy, they kept him from lifting. They kept him from grazing. They kept him from soaring. They kept him from flying. Mm -hmm. Those sandbags. Sandbags were so heavy. They kept him from getting off the ground. They kept him from getting in the air. And you know, at the end of every episode, they showed him just soaring over the mountains, soaring over the valleys. It was because he had to dump those heavy sandbags. Sandbags so heavy. 
And I'm telling you today, the reason why many of you can't get off the ground relationally, emotionally, keep going from one mess to relationship to the next is because the sandbags of your last hurt are still in your basket. So the way you got to leave the ground is you got to dump that. Jesus is on the cross and he knows that unforgiveness is heavy. And in order for him to see a resurrection three days later, he had to dump those bags. How'd he dump them? Father, forgive them. Hey, for they know not what they do. So the lady comes to me, Sister Gloria, she says, Past Adolf, my mother's brother raped me repeatedly. Mama died at 48 from a heart attack. I've been living with the bitterness and hatred that that has given me all of my life. I've I found a friend in Remy Martin. Say, Rem Remy helps dull the pain. But I'm sick of Remy and I'm sick of the hatred. Can you help me? I said, no, but God can. I said, let's do something. We're going to schedule an appointment. Bring me the best picture of your mother you have. She looked at me. I said, go find me a picture of your mama. Come back and see me. She came back with a picture of her mama on a funeral program. I said, we're going to have a talk with her today. I said, Gloria in one chair and her mother's obituary and funeral program in the other. I said, tell your mother how bad it hurt. Oh, she wept. I said, tell your mother how disappointed you were. I said, tell your mama what it made you feel like. Because if you don't reveal it, God ain't going to heal it. But if you open up and let God have it, God will always take it. We spent about an hour her talking to her mother. But her mother was gone. The tears rolled. When she got through, her burden was light. Her joy was sweeter. When she got up, she said, Pass it on. This will kill me no more. Because I realized it died a long time ago. I just kept it alive too long. <laughs> All this morning, it's already happened to you. It's already behind you. Why let it keep living? Today, I want you to bury it. Not in your soul. Get it out. Let God have it. And move on with your life. Why? Because hating you, hating them can kill you. But God wants you to live so that hate cannot bother you any longer. May the Lord bless you. And may the word today be yours because the decision for your freedom happens right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I say thank you for the liberty, the emancipation and freedom of forgiveness. Let it rest upon each and every person in the war room right now that they find freedom from the past hurt and the pain and the indignity and the embarrassment and all that is caused. Restore them. Bless them and help them is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. I gotta go. Hey, war room, send me your prayer request and your praise report. 409-543-0798. 409-543-0798. Pick up my new book. It is entitled Back to the Table. Thank you, War Room, for being so kind. And if you don't know Jesus, please text me. I can't wait to introduce him to you. Monday Thursday is coming. Tomorrow, 6 p.m. And on Resurrection Sunday, if you have nowhere to worship, Virtually, virtually or personally, I would love for you to join me. I got to go. God bless you and God keep you peace. And I'll see you the next time.